The brand's been around since 1996. Started off by a couple in Sydney, and from there it was acquired by another gentleman in Melbourne. And from there, it went to Louis Vuitton, who acquired it through one of their private equity subsidiaries, shall I say. And then uh, we acquired the brand in 2020 as a sort of 100% acquisition. Prior to that, we were just running uh, the whole Middle East piece. And we're now headquartered in Dubai. We've got the whole team here. We have a pipeline of about 23 new stores. This is in the region. And hopefully in the next three to five years, we'll have around 50 stores in the region, a lot of them in Saudi Arabia, um, a few in Egypt, and of course, we're also opening in, in India. That's coming shortly. Very few people do what we do. In fact, very few people that combine so many different things and put them into one space. And that's what I think attracts investors. And of course, there's word of mouth. Most of our current partners have all come to us because of hearing about the brand, the brand's reputation. Uh, their experience when they visited the store. And quite often they write to me saying, listen, I went to store, we loved it. You know, we want to open one of these things. Um, and that's how most of our Middle East expansion has happened. The brand stands out. Like if I walk down a high street, whether it's in London or even America or in Europe, Milan, Paris, wherever, it's very hard to find something that's mainstream that does everything that we do. There are very few places that bake their bread, do great pastry, serve good food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They have a cheese room, which can be combined with a wine bar, for example. A menu that covers pretty much most people's dietary preferences, whether it's a salad, whether it's a steak, what are you looking for? It's, it's well prepared, it looks good on the plate, it tastes good, and it's made from scratch and really hardly anybody does that these days. It's subcontracted or you buy it ready-made. You know, we've never done that. It's always been about artisan food where flavor really matters more, ingredients matters more than anything else. And of course, the provenance of the food, the story, where it comes from. You know, that whole idea of bringing that, that level of transparency and honesty to the food, not just from the kitchen, but also on the shelves. And then of course, you've got the grocery component, you've got the cooking classes, you've got barista classes. You could almost pick components of the brand and expand it. Consumers have become far more intelligent than they used to be. They want to have Instagrammable moments. They want to put their phone up and, and, and look at many things going on, not just in dining, but in their lives. They want to capture these moments and have a story every day. And I think we've been doing it very well for 25 years.